Have you ever lost a fight to someone who seems to know exactly what you were going to do before you even thought about doing it? Unfortunately, everyone has, and in today's intermediate tutorial video, I'll be helping you understand a core concept that allows you to quickly apply deductive reasoning in order to figure out what an opponent will do next based on how they're using the character they're playing. We're going to take a look at every character on the roster and break down how to predict what skill and ultimate they're using, when they'll get it back, and more. This video will be properly structured to respect your time, and timestamps are available in case you want to go back to a certain character's chapter. If you find this guide helpful, make sure to share it with someone else who will benefit from it as well. And without further delay, let's get started. So the first thing I do when I see an opponent is think about what skills they will likely have and how it will affect or change their approach to the fight. In general, aggressive players will use an offensive skill early in the fight, or have a defensive skill or pseudo-defensive skill, and most ultimates are pseudo-defensive. Defensive skills can be used while under attack so they can break true combos, and pseudo-defensive skills can be activated to break soft true combos, which we can see in our first example with Akos. It's safe to always assume any Akos will be using his first skill, since it's his best one in all modes. It's a pseudo-defensive skill, meaning that we can activate it to break out of any soft true or ping-dependent combos. So when going against Ekos, you'll want to only do true combo attacks, so stop your combo and dash away at the first soft true attack, or just 1-2 and dash away to bait out his pseudo-defensive skill. As soon as the damage reduction ends, this is when you should look to open Ekos up for a high damage punish. You'll have about 15 seconds after the damage reduction ends before the skill can be used again. Ekos ultimate can be used when under attack, so unless you hit him with a large true combo at the start of the fight, this usually comes after they've used their skill. Once Akos is in ultimate, it's up to you to stay away from him as best you can, but if he's too close, you have to try to predict his pounce attacks and tap dodge through. Akos has very little weaknesses, but is countered by Tessa, Timulch, and Zai. Real quick, I want to kind of recap what we just went over. I know this information can be overwhelming, and this is a fast-paced video. So since Akos is most likely using a pseudo-defensive skill, we need to avoid using any soft true combos on him. Things like the Dual Blades Toothpick Uppercut, Longsword Toothpick Uppercut, this Nunchucks combo, and any 1-2-3 can be interrupted here, so we need to make sure we're only using actual true combo strings on Echoes when we think he has his ability. Even if it's just a 1-2, and the moment the true attack strings end, we dash away to avoid the attack from his skill. This is the core concept of baiting a pseudo-defensive skill. Most Tarkas will be using his pseudo-defensive first skill, but some may choose to use Fireball, especially in team modes. Bait Tarkas skill just like Echos's. 1-2 dash away, or hold check at the first soft true attack. If they don't use their pseudo-defensive skill the first time we try to bait it, we still assume they have it and just haven't used it yet, so we continue to 1-2 dash or hold check, or only true combo until we've seen what skill the Tarka is using. Tarka ultimate can also be used under attack, so they'll either use this on your first large true combo, or after they've used their skill. Once Tarka is in ultimate, he'll start doing the most annoying stuff in the game. You have to control the distance between you two, shoot him if he tries to heal, and dodge his fire punch. Tarka is countered by Valda and Zai, but a good Tarka won't have much issue with most of the cast. Tessa will almost always have her defensive first skill, because it's incredibly strong. It negates any damage received during activation, so it strengthens Tessa's hold check because she can make risky reads, and if she's wrong, she can just use her skill and doesn't get punished for her mistake. The cooldown on her defensive skill is very long, so even though it can proc again if she's staggered during Foxfire, the downtime of the skill is still over 20 seconds, so you need to take advantage of this window of time after Tessa uses her defensive skill. Her ultimate is pseudo-defensive, and she will likely use the second ultimate in solos, or the first ultimate in team modes. Tessa's ultimate can simply be dodged as soon as you hear the voice line, but it's not always that easy. If you're able to hit Tessa with an uppercut, this should be all the time you need to retrieve your soul. Tessa doesn't have much weakness and counters just about everyone else in the game. Thai usually uses her defensive first skill, though in duos you may see the pseudo-defensive other too. Thai will almost always use her skill before ulting, and will likely ult early in a fight if she had to use her defensive skill, especially since activating Zai's pseudo-defensive ultimate resets her skill cooldown. Once Zai has her chain sights out, the deadliest thing she can do is charge her gold focus attack, which will almost always be the second version, causing fire damage in a wide area, but some solo Zai's will be using the first ultimate for its bigger heal. To counter Zai, you have to watch her attacks closely and manage her stamina properly. You can avoid Zai's skill ground impact by being in the air. 
Your goal should be to stop Zai from getting to gold focus by dodging and interrupting her 1-2 attacks. Zai is extremely versatile, counters healers with fire damage from her second ultimate, and is weak to Valda and Takeda. Most Valdas use her defensive third skill, but you will sometimes see Valda's first skill, and you should be careful engaging a Valda before you know what skill she has, since her first skill can immediately win Valda neutral and has a very short cooldown. Bait Valda to use her defensive skill, and if Valda doesn't use it the first time she loses neutral, you can assume she has first skill and you should pressure her as much as you can. If Valda is on a team with a Viper and or Monk, they will likely use first ultimate to set up Viper stun or Monk grabs, so stay spread out if you see a team comp like this. Otherwise, most Valdas will use second ultimate, but it's not as strong as it used to be. Valda's second ultimate only lasts 15 seconds in solos and 20 seconds in team modes, while having a 3 second cooldown between throwing water spears, and if she lands a spear, there's a 3 second cooldown before you can be affected again. So when Valda ults on you, just dodge her spears or run away for 15 seconds. Valda counters Tarka, Zai, Viper, and Yodo, while being weak against Ekos, Monk, Wu Chen, and Timulch. Faria users typically use her defensive first skill, but may choose to use her third skill for the silence. Faria's defensive skill is very strong, as it interrupts gold focus attacks, giving it versatility in all modes. It has a long cooldown, so Faria will likely hold her defensive skill until she can get high value from it, like if she's hit with a charge blue or an uppercut, but won't be as likely to burn it on a 1-2 dash away unless you 1-2 hold check. 1-2 hold check against Faria will also get her to use her third skill. The thing you have to be the most aware of is Faria dropping a beacon from her pseudo-defensive third ultimate, as this can lead to some big damage. Dealing with her mech form is just about breaking line of sight, dodging cannon shots, and dealing damage directly to Faria whenever available. Faria may struggle against Zai, Ekos, Yodo, Monk, Tarka, or Tessa, since she's susceptible to so many vulnerabilities in her mech and must be played wisely, but she has an easier time targeting support characters like Zaping or Karumi, and has a good matchup against Takeda. Most Justinas will use her defensive second skill, and if they don't use it the first time they lose neutral, we can assume they have Justina's first skill, the one that heals but can't be used when under attack, and they will probably use it after the first time they take damage. Justina's first skill heals in two ticks, and usually players will end the skill before the second healing tick to be less predictable coming out of ice block. Justina's ult is pseudo-defensive, and you will usually face Justina's first ultimate where she gets multiple dashes, and charging blue can prevent you from getting frozen from the first ultimate. Justina's freezing also applies to Transformers. Second ultimate will freeze you whether you're charging blue or not. If she's using third ultimate, you will be frozen if you step into the residual frost. Justina can punish you for hitting her ice block, so prediction attacks are risky. Justina is effective against Zai and Valda, and can be used to counter Transformers, but could have problems against Atarka or Tessa. Zaping's skills and ultimates are all pseudo-defensive, but she doesn't have any defensive abilities, so you must open up on Zaping's with true combos and expect them to use their skill the first chance they get. Many Zaping's prefer the second skill, which gives an inspiration shield, temporarily letting them ignore stagger from non-focus attacks. Whenever a Zaping heals, assume they have Inspiration Shield and Hold Check instead of throwing non-focus attacks. If you see this above a Zaping or her teammates, that means her ultimate is in the state that will save her life if she reaches 0 HP. In her first ultimate, this state happens when the ultimate is fully charged and not in use, and only works for Zaping herself. However, Zaping will almost always have the second ultimate, which gives this state to all teammates when activated, as well as healing them. The best way to avoid the knockback from Zaping's life-saving ability is to trigger it with a ranged weapon. Zaping is heavily affected by fire damage from characters like Zai and Tarka, but is pretty reliable in most matchups. For Yueshan, expect him to have his defensive first skill, as it's a very strong gold-focused line attack that can let him start a combo or peel for his team. He will likely hold his ultimate until his armor is near broken, so if you can focus him down in a true combo after he uses his F, you can prevent him from transforming. When he does transform, you'll want to immediately grapple away if possible, but if you have to face him or just want to kill him, 
The Longsword is probably your best option since you can dodge his attacks and punish with blue focus. Otherwise, just get away from him unless you have a Tessa to control him. Guishan is countered by Tessa and may have issues with Ekos or Yodo, but he's highly effective at dealing with most of the roster in a proper team setup. Viper is a tricky read since she has a defensive skill but also has two pseudo defensive skills with debuffs. So we'll have to be careful when starting a fight with a Viper. The Viper is using either offensive skill, they will likely want to use it at the very beginning of the fight, so you must watch her carefully and always be ready to dodge if she tries to use an offensive skill, because they're incredibly difficult to predict, especially since many Vipers will use their skill after an attack or use the gold focus for a pseudo defensive recovery. If you're charging blue and Viper uses her silence, you won't be pushed back, but if she catches you not charging, she can potentially start a combo from it. In trios, Viper will almost always have the second skill for the Silence. And the Silence is even deadly in 1v1 situations, since the Silence lasts for 8 seconds and the move's cooldown is only 15 seconds. Viper may struggle against Tessa, Matari, or Monk, but gets a good matchup against a lot of the cast. Most Cicadas will have his third skill, though you may see people using his second skill for the heal, and occasionally the first skill. But to counter first skill, you just don't throw blue while he's glowing purple. It's pretty easy. Since skills 2 and 3 are pseudo-defensive, they will likely look to use them after a 1-2, or at first soft true. So it's easy to bait out, just be cautious with 1-2 hold check since Takeda can try to grab you on prediction. Takeda's only defensive skill comes from his ultimate. His ultimate can be pretty tough to deal with since he can throw out up to 3 demon spirits about every 3 seconds. Most Takedas will probably be pretty aggressive in ult, even though they have plenty of time in their transformation. So predict when he'll try to interrupt you, dodge preemptively, and get ready for the next demon spirit in a few seconds. Takeda can effectively deal with Tessa, Matari, Wuchen, or Zai, but could get countered by Feria, Valda, Ekos, or Viper. All of Timult's skills are defensive, and he will likely have his first or second skill. It's always safe to assume it will be first skill, because second skill is reactable. Once you see Timult go in the air, you need to look at him and be ready to dodge the tornado. The tornado will not affect you if you're holding blue focus, and you can dodge out. Typically Timult likes his third ultimate, because he can pass through his big tornado and give himself an extra charge of his skill endlessly. Timulches can pass through each other's tornadoes, even when they're not on a team, and if they are using third ultimate, they will even gain a skill charge. Timulch is effective at dealing with Monk, Balda, and Akos, but may struggle against Justina, Wuchin, or another Timulch. You will likely see third skill from Wuchin, since he's mostly a team mode character pick, but he does appear in solos from time to time. All Wuchin skills are defensive. His third skill heals armor, and leaves large light walls on the ground that can stop projectiles from ranged weapons or even Valda F1 or V2. In team modes, they will almost always use first ultimate to get their team out of a fight if someone dies, so he's a high priority target in a team fight. In solos, they may use Switch or Portal Ultimate, so if they use Portal, note that it can be used under attack as well. I recommend to back away from the portals or play in between them, utilize ranged attacks, and don't chase him from one portal to the other over and over. This is usually unproductive and may lead to Wu Chen making a portal play on you since he can go through the portal while charging blue and release it in your face instantly. If they are using Switch Ultimate, they will likely be looking to extend a combo on you, so be very careful engaging in melee neutral with a solo Wu Chen. If Wu Chen has blades around him when an attack would have his HP hit zero, his killing blow will be completely negated. This means it is best to get Wu Chen very low before delivering a killing blow, instead of trying to kill him from 50% HP or more. Wu Chen will often use a skill to keep ascending into the air, and this could be a vulnerable moment you could take advantage of. Wu Chen is good at dealing with Valda, Timulch, and Feria, but not so good at dealing with Ekos, Tessa, and Takeda. Some monks like the defensive first skill, and some like the second skill, known as Parry Bell, which is very strong if used correctly, since it can counter blue focused attacks. If you're hold checking a monk that hasn't used his skill yet, be cautious when trying to clash blues, because they could have parry bell. 
Monk will likely try to ult when he gets low on armor, and will probably be carrying range damage resist jades for when everyone starts shooting at his transformation. Monk is another high priority target in a teamfight, and you need to secure the kill with confirmed hits when he's about 60-75% to total health if you want to prevent him from transforming. This is a lot easier with a team. Vajra is weak to Echos, Tessa, and Zai, but has good matchups against Faria, Viper, and other monks. Matari is not picked as much anymore, and her skill is always a pseudo-defensive, short-range teleport. On second skill, Matari will have two charges of teleport. On third skill, Matari will leave a ghost behind and can teleport back to it while under attack. If Matari teleports while you are fighting, they likely teleport it into the air, so quickly glance up and spin around to check. Commonly after teleporting into the air, a Matari will drop down with a blue focus attack to try to surprise you, or simply begin running. Matari's pseudo-defensive ultimate makes her whole team invisible for 12 to 16 seconds and may give her team a buff like lifesteal or extra attack. Fighting invisible enemies is tough and risky since aim assist doesn't work and Matari gains access to a special backstab move, but this backstab attack can be dodged. Matari directly counters Viper, but is weak against Ueshan, Zai, and Takeda. Harumi's skill tethers her to a teammate or her umbrella, giving her access to a teleport with a gold focus area attack or an ability based on which version of her skill she's using. Almost every Kurumi uses third skill now, since it reduces incoming damage by 90% for 5 seconds. If Kurumi is tethered to an enemy you're fighting, the enemy will be hyper aggressive, often not hesitant to throw every 1.0 because Kurumi can just save him from getting parry punished, so in duos you must focus Kurumi. She will either use first or second skill, depending on who her teammates are, and since she can move her circle now, there's not much counterplay to her ult besides just pushing her out of her circle. Yoto is pretty off meta at this point, and most Yoto players you encounter will either use her defensive third skill or her first skill for the combo starter slash extender slash peel. If they have first skill, they will likely use it at the beginning of a fight, and if they don't immediately use third skill upon losing neutral, assume they have first skill. Every Yoto uses her pseudo defensive third ultimate since it gives her a lot of damage reduction and healing, but Yoto's blades can be tap dodged on reaction just by watching her animation. You should now be familiar with the concept of assessing your opponent's skills and ultimates. Use this knowledge to make your opponents waste their abilities, and to help you understand how to approach fights, or even decide which fights are favorable or unfavorable to take. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.